on a two-lane highway on the wrong side facing oncoming traffic and obstructing but these are the shysters she's probably bitching that somebody didn't have a mask on you know and she wants them arrested these are the people right here all these people right these shysters these are the ones that think it's okay right now in america where two people now that were not vaccinated but needed an organ transplant were refused the life-saving organ transplant because they were not vaccinated so they're uh giving them a death sentence unless they want to have a vaccine they're going to term they're going to they're the ones now the hospital and the government are going to give these two people now a death sentence right that's that's tyranny and that only leads to one day fat people or drug addicts or car accidents or uh people that have play football your kids ride a bike and they break their neck or their arm. They're going to be refused service because it's a person's, like they're saying right now, we're not refusing you service. It's a per, it's your personal choice not to be vaccinated so you can't have service. So uh, they can refuse and they will in the future if you think this is absurd. 10 years ago, this would have been absurd and a human rights violation to refuse a medical, uh, medical care, life-saving medical care to a person because they weren't vaccinated or because the hospital uh, had mandates that a patient be something and dictate who gets care, right? It would have been absurd and it would have been in the Supreme Court the next day, right? But one day, if now that this is being normalized and okay and all these people right here, these sheep, like her, all these liberal retards, uh, think it's okay and uh, in the near to in the near short future, uh, fat people and your kids for riding a uh, fat people will be refused if they have a heart attack and you're obese or you have diabetes, you will be refused or a stroke uh, care when you're brought to the hospital with a heart attack. They'll let you sit there and die because it was a personal choice to be overweight and you refused medical guidance and prevention and preventative care from a doctor that said you need to lose weight and diet and you refuse to do that so they're going to refuse care or if you smoke if you smoke weed if you're a drug addict then you get cancer or you od you're going to be refused service because it was a personal choice to smoke and you got lung cancer no lung transplant no uh cancer treatment to save your life you're going we're giving you a death sentence and we're the judge, jury, and executioner that, des that decides your fate, that you're going to die because you smoked or you're obese, right? Or we're going to refuse to fix your son's or your daughter's broken arm because they were riding their bike. And that was a personal choice. Just as not being vaccinated is a personal choice. That was a, your child's and your personal choice to let them play or ride that bike or play football, which caused a preventable injury to happen and to be sustained. So we're refusing medical care to your child because we advised you not play football or ride that bike, right? And you, sh and you charlatans and sheep that don't put the correlation together will have this happen to you one day, right? It'll happen to you just like this intellectually dead person. No one is refusing care, referring to the two people that have been refused life-saving organ transplants. The patient is not eligible for a treatment option. And so you can't wait until they stop helping population show that you're more concerned with proving your point than saving lives. That shows you, this shows you how morally uh, dead and intellectually and the IQ of this country is uh, gone. That very statement that she's making, I'm not about, it's a, it's a medical, it's a medical treatment option. No, it's life, it's life saving, op, it's a life saving uh, medical procedure. The same is for Beth Burnett that is slightly overweight. If she has a heart attack, God forbid. It was a medical choice and she is being refused care in her own words for a medical treatment option because she was overweight and refused to diet and it was a preventable 
a heart attack. This is how stupid this population is in this world is. I'm more about saving lives. She's more about government dictates and and decides who lives and dies. That's what authoritarians do and communists. And this shows you how intellectually dead this country is. And the IQ is just abominably uh, uh, have been dropped. We have an IQ slightly below functionally retarded in this country now because Beth Burnett is obviously slightly below functionally retarded because a functional retard knows that it is not a medical treatment option to have a life-saving organ transplant. That's a life-saving medical procedure. It's not an option. It's not a uh, privilege to get life-saving medical care, right? And she's saying they're not being, re- no one's refusing. In her own statement, she's saying they're being refused. This is how stupid, and this is uh, just just how intellectually and brainwashed and dead this, the population is. And when anyone thinks this is going to get better, these are the morons that don't understand what they're promoting. No, when you say we're refusing you this care, you're refusing them care. You can't say we're not saying no one's refusing you care. That's the same thing as when they uh, take your guns away by law and then they come out and say no one's taking your guns away. We're just saying you can't have these guns, but no one's banning them. That's how stupid you people are. People are fucked. Get your fucking shit together. Like, subscribe, and share. Peace and love. On this mid October, uh, mid autumn, pre sunrise, and Chanzo's Gold Crypto Investing, where you like, subscribe, and share for a one of a kind company made, uh, Tarxician based uh, technical uh, trading classes, uh, DGCINews.com trading alerts, right? Uh, and welcome back to all my new subscribers on our way to 1,000, right? You guys need to get your fucking shit together. Uh, Jerome Powell, they want him out. They're saying he's an evil white man, right? And that's why uh, the minorities and the women are being oppressed. So they want him out. And as Elizabeth Warren said, he's an evil man because he's white and he's a man. So the next Fed chair, the Fed chairman... It's going to be a black man to satisfy the needs of the black population or it's got to be a woman. Obviously, they couldn't find a black woman, so there's no black women around that have the qualifications or have qualifications for the job, right? So those are the two choices because those are good people and the evil white man's evil. What the flying fuck is a fat chairman going to do about minority and women poverty and rights all the federal all the fed chairman can do is monetize debt right which means they give the government the power to create currency and they monetize it aka they expand the money supply aka they cause inflation aka uh prices rise because that's all the fed can do is expand the money supply, right? That's what inflation is. And the cause is expanding the money supply. The effect is inflation. Inflation, in turn, when you go shop, is prices rising. It's not the evil, greedy businessman raising prices to rip the customer off. The whole point of the businessman is to get a cheap, affordable product that the consumer wants to the fucking consumer. Think of everything you see at the store. Shoes come out. Shoes are expensive. 73 million other shoe factories come out. Shoes get cheap. Clothes come out. You love the clothes. Clothes are expensive. Other people manufacture clothes, drive the price down because of competition. That's the whole point of the business game, right? That's what business people try to do. They try to come up with a new product that the customer wants or needs at a cheap, affordable price with a phenomenal product that the consumer wants to purchase. 
and then another asshole will come out with a similar product, cheaper and better, driving the price down. That's what competition's all about. What the Fed does is they print money. They expand the currency supply, which means there's more money to buy less goods or the same amount of goods, which means the price goes up. Inflation. Price is rising because the government printing, expanding the currency supply, which is inflation, and the effect of that are prices rising. Get your fucking shit together. What all that means is gold is going to go through the roof. Gold's been coiling up for 13, 14, 15 and a half months since August of 2020. I've been on this since I've been on here, ranting and raving, telling you to buy the dips. Every time since I've been on this fucking channel, down there, 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 everywhere down there, I've told you to buy. The gold bullion's down 18% from the top. The mining stocks are down 25 to 45%, 50% from their peaks. Phenomenal buying opportunities, way undervalued. The price of gold and precious metals is going to skyrocket. I've been trying to tell you this, but you shysters out here and fleecers and charlatans only want to talk about the fucking coins. Well, what good are the coins going to do when gold's at $5,000 an ounce? The coin ain't going to do a fucking thing. You need some coins and you need bullion or mining stocks. You got to protect yourself. They're telling you and, they, and open your fucking eyes. And here's a great chart I did for you. Uh, nearly a century silver chart. All the way back to where I started it. But it goes all the way back to the 30s. When the price of fucking silver was 30 cents. Where some of this crypto shit is that you want to buy. And then it, it plateaued. Got all the way up to $1.30. And it skyrocketed. In 1980 to 50 fucking dollars an ounce. That's incredible. $50 an ounce in 1980 because you had massive inflation after the 1960s guns and butter economy with the progressive Democrats and their socialist uh, my, my policies of the time of the green or the great the New Deal right and all the other nonsense that they had going on back then in the 1980s you paid for all the currency they created or the inflation, the expansion of the money supply in the 60s and early 70s manifested itself in the mid 70s and uh, had its climax in the late 70s and early 80s when Reagan got elected because you had runaway inflation and you had the dollar under siege. The world was running from the dollar and it was about to lose its uh, brief status as world reserve currency and dominance in the marketplace and the whole United States was coming crashing down before their very eyes, right? And then it crashed when they uh, price fixed and then raised interest rates to 20%. Could never do that now. We had a surplus. We were a creditor nation in 1980. We were allowed, we had, we had a savings. Now we have 27 and a half trillion in debt and rising trillions a day, right? You can't raise interest rates to 20% to save the dollar and instill confidence back into the world uh, marketplace, right? Can't do that. The whole thing would come unglued. So you're fucked. I got this beautiful chart. And think a little bit. And you've had new plateaus every 20 years when you come retest. It's always significantly higher, right? It went from 30 cents to $1.25 to 450 to $14. But think of it, when the when Janet Yellen, the communist uh, troll, comes out and says, America always pays their debt. America pays its bills. But if you don't raise the debt ceiling and allow us to borrow more money from the people we owe the money to, we're going to default. We're not going to pay them. By the very definition of them saying her saying that, and the rest of the government saying that, they're admitting to you they're already defaulted, which an average man with a thinking brain knows this, and they're running a big Ponzi scheme. 
Bernie Madoff ran that Ponzi scheme. And when it came out that he was borrowing money from new investors or uh, people that thought they were investing to pay off old investors, that's a, a Ponzi scheme. And they threw him in jail and he died there. But the federal government admits that and nothing happens. They're allowed to do it. Right? The same thing with this moron, communist, uh, shyster Joe Biden and all the shysters and charlatans that support him. He gets on TV and has a, a, an address, not even a press conference, because he doesn't answer any questions. It's not a press conference. A press conference means uh, you make a statement and the reporters ask fucking questions. He's a dictator. He makes statements and leaves. He says he's going to have the, the seaports uh, work 24 hours a day to free up the supply chain to reduce inflation. Hey, numb nuts, that's not the problem. You can free up the fucking supply chain all you want by uh, unloading more. The problem is, is you're importing and you have the biggest trade deficit in United States history. Every month you've been in office, and every month that comes on and goes by in a new month, you break that record. You have massive importation of goods because we don't produce anything. You can't free up the supply chain by borrowing money in U.S. treasuries to other countries like China and they ship you goods. That's not going to solve anything. That makes the problem worse. That's why we got so many sea cans here. Because trade means we're supposed to fill them fucking sea cans back up and send some shit that we built that they need back to them motherfuckers. We don't do that. We send them uh, IOUs and uh, government notes. You people are fucked up. You need to get your shit together. You need to stop being shysters and get educated because this whole uh, facade's coming unglued and coming down and going to collapse in upon itself. Uh, this inflation's not going to stop. The official government numbers for the CPI, Consumer Price Index, that's rigged, says we're going to have 7% inflation for 2021, right? When really, if you look at homes, they're up 20%. Gas, it's up 30%, right? Groceries are up 10%. Natural gas is at, an all, is at a 10-year high. It's up 300% from last year. Copper, soy, wheat, corn, energy, it's all at all-time high, skyrocketing. It's only going to get worse next year. If you think it was bad this year, wait till you have official 10% inflation next year. Which, if you put your thinking caps on, if they were ranking and uh, rating inflation the way they did in the 1970s and 1980s, we'd be at 15 to 20% inflation right now again. Just like we were back then, but they're hiding it because the Fed can't do anything about it, right? And they know it. And the only ones that don't know it are the sheeple out here, the herd animals. The guys you see on TV. Here, I'll show you some of these people. I'll show you some of these people. I know none of that's probably spelt right, but I'm driving. I'm just trying to get this picture up here, right? These people, the charlatans and the shysters and the communists and the intellectually dead numbskulls that have no critical thinking skills whatsoever. These are the people uh, that believe this nonsense, that the inflation is not a problem and it was transitory and it's only 3%. Uh, right, the, these are the people right here. All of them, like her or him, whatever that is. Uh, this, this, all these. These are the these are the shysters and the scumbags. Her probably yelling because somebody didn't have a mask on. Uh, I'm not really sure what's going on here. This guy is uh, just cruising along. Stopped facing me for some ungodly reason. Not exactly sure what his philosophy on that. Uh, on what he was trying to do there is it's not a good spot to look at map or whatever you're doing when you're parked on the wrong side of the road on a two-lane highway.